Hello everybody and welcome to the character profile for Faye Windass. This is the YouTube version and comes to you in two parts. So it comprises of the original profile which we recorded back in 2014 for episode 101 of the podcast and then the updated one recorded for episode 577 of the podcast in May 2023 after Faye's left. So this is pretty much everything that the characters got up to in a time on the show. It's fairly lengthy. It's nearly two hours long. You can skip ahead to the new one if you want to with the timestamps in the uh, description. But yeah, if you want to know everything that Faye's done on Coronation Street since she joined us, this is the right place. So uh, buckle in. Here's nearly two hours of Faye. Okay, it's character profile time now. Um, this week's character is one that I think everyone who watches Cory has got an opinion on. She's either good or bad, and I think that she's she's great. It's Faye. What do you... Do you like Faye? Faye, I take or leave, I think. I don't find her particularly charismatic as an actress. I find Is that the, just the character that yeah, she plays? I find the character complex and interesting, but I'm not necessarily likeable, which is a good thing for a soap. You don't need to like everybody. No, I think she does a good job of being um, sort of a... It's a grumpy teenager kind of it. You're right, she's got a lot of issues. I mean, she's, she's had a coloured backstory, hasn't she? And I think it's good to show that yeah, these children... Yeah, she can't just that, be a little angel. No, I think it's good to show that these children that are adopted or fostered and may have these difficult backgrounds don't just transform into yeah. model citizens but overnight. Also that that they're worth the time and the effort, aren't they? Because poor old Faye, she's been through a lot, but she still loves her family. And she, she's, she treats Anna like her mum. And she doesn't, you know, there's no drama about, oh, you're not my real mum and stuff. I think. Oh, no, that's never brought up. Well, it's nice. That it it's not sometimes true. has been brought up. Yeah, but, but I not mean, as much as you think they could have. No, it, it's just like blurted out sometimes, isn't it? When she thinks something isn't fair. And, and, and her behaviour this I week is... that's has, what a, a real kid would be like. Yeah, exactly. And her behaviour this week has shown that she wants to go the distance to bring her family together. Yeah. So, um... Quick rundown of uh, Faye. She was born on the the 13th of March 2002. Um, Tim Metcalf is obviously her dad and her mum was called Jenny, Jenny Butler. But she has a new mother and adopted mother, mother Anna Windass. And uh, I don't think she hasn't got any brothers or sisters um, from Tim and Jenny, but Gary is an adoptive brother for her. And um, I think he's a, he does a great job being an older brother. Do you think she would consider Izzy and... Um... Katie, Katie to be her her sisters. It's hard to tell, isn't it? It's really weird. It is. I mean, it is all it Te- is all a bit. Technically, they family, kind of are oh, because if Owen and Anna are living together, mm. yeah, no, I guess so. They're common law husband and wife, aren't they? Yeah, I think that um, Gary is the best kind of sibling. He he, he knows, knows how to deal with. He her. treats her like she he is her big brother. Yeah, I say Izzy and Katie don't really treat her like she is their. No, they not don't really. treat her badly, but they don't. There's no bond between them the same way that there is between Izzy and Katie. No, and I think that's been something that's kind of made um, the character of Gary warm to me a little bit over the years because I'm not a massive fan of um, of the character, but I, I have liked sort of the scenes that he's shared with uh, Faye and done a, a big yeah. brother role. So Faye first appeared on Coronation Street on the 24th of January 2011. She's been in 242 episodes, I think, so far, and she is played by Ellie Leach. Now, Ellie's first TV role was on a Staples ad. Um, she was a, it, it couldn't have been long before she was in Coronation Street. She was a, a girl with a seemingly bottomless pencil case. And Aww, it was like, jealous. List, everyone was wanting to borrow all her stuff, and she was reeling off all these um, amazing pens and pencils that she's got in her, in her pencil case there. Can only imagine. And I, I could kind of tell from that appearance why she got the role of Faye as well, because she seemed a bit like, she seemed quite... Um... Annoying? <laughs> no, maybe not annoying, but you know her... Quite, uh, I don't for, know. What are you talking about? She she, she seemed quite bossy. forthright and bossy. Yeah, kind of kind of a bit um, smug with herself as well. Not supposed to describe female um, children as bossy. Aren't you? No. Oh, okay. There's a new there's a new um, campaign because it's very um, misogynistic oh. and pushes young girls away from leadership roles. She, so looked, she looked like a leader. Really, I apologise for calling her bossy. The leader in having good pencils and pens. The so, technical term is bossy boots. <laughs> um, but on the 10th of January 2011, that's when the casting um, news uh, of Ellie broke. Uh, and she's actually, and I'd totally forgotten about this before 
I did the research of the character How profile. Could you she is Brooke Vincent's cousin. Did you remember that? Had you forgotten that? Of course I don't did you ever know that? that? No, I completely utterly forgot. I vaguely know who Brooke Vincent is. You know who Brooke Vincent is, but yeah, I, I, I remember <laughs> oh God, now. No, I, I remember now reading that they'd be cousins, but I've forgotten since then, so that's pretty cool. Um, and Brooke had said, um, I'm chuffed to bits for her. She has made me so happy. We're all thrilled about it, and I can't wait to be with her on set to show her Nepotism. around. There's not really been very many scenes at all between um, Sophie no, and Faye Havler. I don't uh, imagine they Havler. actually see each other very much. But I, I guess, I guess there's, there was always the potential for it because of um, Tim and Sally together and uh, and, and Faye and, and Sophie. I mean, they, hmm. they live next door to each other, but um, anyway. It's close enough. I was also a bit confused when I was doing some research because Aww. when the casting news broke, um, all, all the older articles about her call her Ellie Louise Leach. But now she is definitely Ellie Leach everywhere, so I don't oh. know if she's dropped that middle name. or. It's probably easier for an actress, isn't it? I, maybe. I don't know whether it's some stage name thing. I mean, Jack P. Shepherd has got his P in, hasn't he, and everything, which is strange to differentiate him from Jack Shepherd. But anyway. I'd say Ellie Louise Leach sounds better than Ellie Leach. Ellie well. Leach sounds like a made-up word. Ellie Leach. <laughs> say that, doesn't he? Sorry. But anyway, yeah, she's now Ellie Leach officially. That's her actress Leach. name. So um, in 2011, she was introduced as a potential adoptive child for Anna and Eddie Windass. Um, at, wasn't that at the time? Wasn't Steve and um, Becky looking into adoption yeah, as well? Yeah, there's too the... much adoption stuff. Well, they were going together, and I think um, Steve yeah. and Becky are a bit put out that Anna and Eddie, who didn't have the best family life, um, were actually the well, more it's successful because ones. Well, Becky had a criminal background and she couldn't adopt. Yeah. Well, she, she certainly seemed like a troubled child from the start and she was sort of, you know, grumpy and a, a bit rude and everything, but she, she slowly warmed to them, although um, her confidence in them was shaken when she saw them move, going through her bags in March 2011. But anyway, she was um, she was in there living with them um, by April. Yeah, she ended up stealing a bag with £500 in it from Fizz and a box of chocolates from the cabin and she gave them to Anna as kind of a way of ingratiating herself, which didn't go down too well. No. Um, later that year, not not too long after that, she discovered that her mum had died from a heroin overdose because um, Eddie had kind of accidentally told her. He Eddie always, I think he took the attitude that it's it was all a bit too much for him and um, he, he later went on to say that he, he only went through with this adoption process to make Anna happy and he didn't want to be a dad again. He didn't have to deal with these issues. He didn't want to have to tell Faye that her mum had died of a heroin overdose and it kind of, he accidentally blurted it out, I think. Yeah. And um, he was offered a, a job in Germany, and then he, uh, when when he offered Anna to go with him over there, she was like, "No, I'm staying with Faye because." Yeah, he 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 didn't really want to be with Faye at all. They, I think that they they changed his character a little bit to get rid of him because he yeah. never seemed to be this kind of guy before. He didn't seem to be the type that would just up and leave. I think it was quite quickly him being here and being gone. It was like in yeah. the space of a week. All this has well, happened. it also happened that um, Gary, she, Faye told Gary that Eddie was hitting Anna, and uh, that didn't help. That gave no. him a bit more He's reason like, I, I to I don't want to deal with this. Yeah. It is a shame, because I, I thought that Anna, Eddie and Anna were a nice couple together before yeah. uh, Anna came along. He was always baking his cakes, and he was a bit useless, And she, but she was like the They were the, quite the a colourful little, car- little couple, weren't they? I preferred them as a couple than Anna and Eddie. Uh, Ad, Anna and Owen, I think. I think Anna and Owen are more suited to each other, but... Eddie was a, certainly a better soap character than Owen is. Yeah, yeah, because he had the comedy value, didn't yeah. he? Um, so, um, Faye gets adopted officially by Anna in November, but then she finds out that Anna is dating Owen. Oh, no. And she's not happy about this because she thinks that Owen won't like her. Yeah. Um, and it's... she ends up getting the, the role of Mary in the school nativity play that year, but she gets too scared and gives her part to Katie... Who then gives birth on the stage? Yes, this is a soap, ladies and gentlemen. Soap, yeah. <laughs> I always thought that that was a little bit vicaratively when that happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so that was uh, that was Faye's first eventful year. And on the internet, it doesn't say very much about what she was getting up to in 2012, but um, probably the most memorable little storyline at the beginning is when she kills Owen's fish. Because she, she really just wanted to get rid of him, didn't she? She didn't yeah. like him. She, she, didn't, she thought that... Anna would sort of be more interested in him than her. What did he do? What did he? Was she pour into the pond? Some some chemicals. She I, just poured it all in there and yeah, it died. Owen thought it was um David first. Yeah, they I were think. having a neighbourly feud and then he worked. When he worked out, it was her. He slapped her across the legs, um, and Anna and Owen break up briefly about this. But Owen was mostly upset that she'd killed, 
you know, not not oh you ruined a belonging of mine, but like how could you do that to those poor animals? Yeah. Just to get back at me. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that Faye had the best moral upbringing, did she? It is quite just... shocking when children do something that seems so obviously immoral. Yeah, because I think lots of children, well, there's not many children that would actually go so far as to do that, because children like animals. Yeah, it is quite a bad sign when they start to <laughs> kill I, little. I guess creatures. it. I guess it shows how much she's grown. Because I don't think she would do that now, no, would she? To to get back at anyone or anything. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, then she, then she started saying, um, oh, then she started having bullying issues later on in the year. And this girl it's called, a bit political. yeah, this girl called Lindsay, who, um, I think I'm right in saying was the granddaughter of the chair of governors was bullying her. But, um, old Brian Packham, you know, he's not, not the best head, like no. was happy to sweep it under the carpet just for the sake of, uh, politics between him and the governor. But then Anna said, right, I'm taking Faye out of school. Um, and Brian was forced to, um to send Lindsay because obviously Faye is model pupil and ones that get in all the uh, the high grades of the school maybe not but yeah anyway so that was that was the end of that storyline but um I was quite I'd, I'd forgotten about this storyline and the bullying comes back in 2013 doesn't it but the shoot is on the other foot later on in the year but we'll get onto that in a minute because the first major thing that happens in 2013 which is a, a much bigger year things ramped up for Faye was that she got in touch with her father Tim Tim! Who she hadn't seen since she was two. So there was a little internet storyline where um, she was being kind of suspicious on chat rooms and everything, wasn't she? And um, yeah, Hannah and Owen was like, out. yeah, uh, uh, trying to stop her. Um, Owen even went so far as to break her computer. Um, that was show her. Yeah, but then Wonder. Tim threatened to report them to the social services. Um, so they ended up giving up. They kind of reluctantly, because mm. uh, the, 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 I can't remember, the solicitor or someone said, well, you can't legally stop Faye from seeing Tim, so they were uh, they unhappily let him into Faye's life. Yeah, they weren't. They were, yeah, they weren't keen at all. No, now because she was going through um, troubled teenager phase at the moment. Although actually, she's not. Uh, she's not even a teenager. I think she's only twelve at the moment. So it's just like go, she's uh, maturing Tim. early. Um, yeah, she she decides she wants to go and stay with Tim because she's fed up of living with Anna and Owen. Uh. Um, so Anna has to drag her back home from Tim's house one day, and I remember the, her sort of dragging her across the street, and there being people there watching, and she was there kicking and screaming. Faye said she hated her, smashes up some photos, and then she told Brian that Anna had been hitting her. So um, uh, is this something that Faye had experienced in the past between? Um, her mum and other boyfriends, maybe. I, I don't know whether that, I'm making that up or whether it's I don't know. something that actually happened. But the fact that she's twice in, in as many years is using, or is lying to say that so and so is is hitting someone else makes me think that she's maybe witnessed this. I can't remember this. what her background is supposed to be, and because Tim buggered off, didn't he? Quite yeah, he went when, when she was two. I don't. I think when she saw him in 2013, that had been the first time for like 10 years or so. So nearly. it's entirely possible that her mother raised in a really abusive series of relationships that where Faye learned that people hit each other or say that they got hit or yeah yeah and that might have actually happened but I couldn't find it anywhere so I don't know maybe someone can tell us but yeah um the, the police get involved anyway and Faye realizes she's a bit over her head <laughs> um <laughs> Anna, Whoops. Anna still reluctantly allows Faye to stay with Tim because she, she's Anna's always wanted what's best for Faye and I think it's been quite sad because of the way that Faye's um, treated her sometimes because Anna really wants wanted to be a mum again and she's only done what's right or what she believes has been right for, for Faye and she sadly had to let her go. But it didn't turn out so well though because um, Tim went up to Newcastle for a job and Faye was left alone in the flat for a week. Now, it wasn't Tim's fault necessarily because um, he'd sent... Because he's an idiot. He'd sent Faye over to Anna's house. He says, right, I'm going up to Newcastle. You go and live with your mum for a week. And she said she did. And then she snuck back. And I th- I can't remember what she was getting up to. Was she like watching DVDs late and stuff and, and getting tired? I can't remember. We we thought at the time that she would end up like setting the flat on fire or something. And nothing quite so shocking happened. Yeah, we were. Yeah, we thought this would be a lot more exciting than it turned out to be. I think. Yeah, but Owen discovered what was going on in the end. I think. I think it was like probably a case of Owen went round there and, and she, she's like, "Oh, Tim's not in at the moment," and he kind of went in. <laughs> I think actually no, I think she went down to the cabin and she was trying to steal some food or something to feed herself because Tim didn't have any supplies in. But anyway, yeah, it, it was all um, it was all sorted out. Um, it was all all right in the end. Yeah. Um, Owen kind of threatened Tim on his way back, which I, I kind of felt a bit sorry for him with uh, the time, I think. And Faye went back to live over the road with um, with Anna and 
Who was that? Who was Anna with? Anna and Owen again. Yeah. Um, then the last main storyline she had before um, this Trouble at the Mill one, which she's not really been too involved in, has she? No, she's been on the periphery of most of it because it's a bit too mature. It is. It's to a bit. You, her into. You're right. It's a, it's a bit too. Uh, Dodgy. Yeah, for her. But um, she had this bullying storyline at the end of last year, and then we had um, Grace, who I, I thought was quite a good character at the time, who seemed all sweetness and light to Anna, but actually she was a nice little girl, and she was encouraging Faye to, uh, to throw stones at Mary's camper van, and I think this is a time when we got to see that Faye's not all bad, because I think she, she could see that what she was doing was wrong, but she was being led astray by this Grace girl. Uh, and then it got worse when they forced Simon to dress up, didn't they, in one of um, yeah. Leanne's dresses or there something? Yeah, there was a lot of stuff on the internet about that as well. Was there? I can't remember. Yeah, saying what. people saying about her, them dressing her up as him up as a girl and things. Yeah, to, to humiliate him. Yeah. Well, anyway, um, it, they got cautioned by the police and uh, no longer friends with Grace. And I, I was quite, I was quite sad at the time that that was the the last that we saw of Grace because we saw them at the police station, yeah. didn't we? We saw Grace being taken away by her mum. Um, and and that was it, and she's barely been mentioned again. And it was yeah, it was a shame because I I enjoyed watching Grace, even though she was obviously evil. I mean, it's because I guess we don't see many stories at school, but maybe if there is another story set at school, any time for Faye, because they sometimes have um have stories done. over at Weatherfield Comprehensive, maybe we'll see Grace again. I wouldn't yeah, mind that. She was a good kid. Yeah, she was very evil. I quite liked her being in it, but um, perhaps a bit too young for it to really get too far into it because it's hard to make a child a figure of hate and uh, defend your position yeah as a soap yeah you know? that's true actually yeah so uh, yeah and like we said she hasn't really done much this year has she i mean the, the main well, the main window storylines have been have been the, the no no um but i mean she's starting to get a bit more involved now so we'll have to see so um how do you think that we, we kind of mentioned it you said that you can take her or leave her but acting wise do you think that she she's a good actress even if she plays a character that we're not supposed to like because i think she does a pretty decent job at it she's she's pretty believable she's not she's not um, the best okay well what do you think i think well, I don't... No, you're making me say horrible things. Oh, OK. I just, just think, think she just... Okay. It just seems like she reads her lines, which is what I would do. <laughs> she's... I can't criticise. I think at the moment, though, she does a better job than Simon, so, who we who we think overacts a little bit, Alex Bain, doesn't mm. he? I think she... she yeah, she, she she reads her lines. She's, she's OK. Um, and she's, she's mellowing a bit, but I think the programme makers will want to turn her into a, a grumpy teenager and um well we don't have any, driven any to characters that age do we at the moment they're no. all young adults we don't really have any teenagers raising hell i think sophie was the last one to really cause sophie and david yeah mostly david i mean sophie she, she well did... no all that stuff with her running off to get married and everything is what i'm thinking of. yeah but um you've got to be careful when you cast when, when you when you're casting like um, angry teenagers because Jack P. Shefford did such an amazing job at being like devil child that most other actors are going to pale in comparison to him. Yeah, I mean, I, I wish we did have a character like that. I don't know if Faye would be the right one. But when, often when we speak about children who have been born, who've, who've uh, moved away from the street, who would be about that age, we always say, oh, it would be great if they came back and they were like, but you know... But Bethany, obviously, she's obviously not old enough. But yeah. things, you know, we always say things like that. We we wish that some characters, teenage ones, would come in. Mm, yeah. So um, I was wondering whether we'd see a romance between her and Simon as a this possible storyline. It's just story weird line. to talk about. Because there's only like a year or so in between them, I think, isn't there? And I mean, if if Faye is going to stay in it for a significant amount of time, and I don't particularly see a reason to think that she won't at the moment, they're obviously going to have some kind of. Um, romantic storyline with her and I think at some point even if it doesn't they don't stay together properly as a couple I'm predicting that's my long reaching prediction that she'll have some kind of relationship with Simon when they're old enough well there's certainly not very many other people to pick from is there no no so unless they bring someone else in um so would you like her if she like when she's gone through this teenage phase what kind of person uh, would you like her to be? Phase. phase. Would you like her to be like a Tracy of like a, a, a scheming kind of bitchy character? Or would you like her to, to mellow out and be a kind of normal 
I mean, is she going to be like Izzy and Katie, a bit, a bit bland, but maybe a bit more likable? I don't know. I think she's going to be more like a kind of Tina character, like a feisty, streetwise kind of, kind yeah. of kid, because she's obviously had this background and troubled past that gives her motivation to be a bit of a of a cheek. Because um, people like Becky and Kylie, they're always a bit a bit feisty and. Uh, um, hard, you know, hard to handle, and they they've got like the reason behind it, which makes them more sympathetic, and gives you room to, gives the writers room to to be more sympathetic towards them too. So maybe, maybe a bit feisty. Right, yeah, I think so. It, it could go anywhere at the moment because they, she's got this past, but she's been mellowing out more. But I think it's only natural for her to be a bit I think of a she'll either raiser. be really, really feisty or she'll end up being like a goody, goody two-shoes who goes off to university and will never see from her, hear from her again. Yeah, But she possible. doesn't give me the impression of being a particularly overly bright child. Well, no, she, she doesn't kind of, seem to be academic. She wanted to leave school to be a window yeah, cleaner this week. She's got, she's, she's average at school, I would have said. Yeah, I reckon so. Well, there was actually um, rumours in the paper regarding Faye, which we obviously won't talk about as we're a spoiler-free podcast, but um, that could be quite interesting if that happened, even if it is well, a bit you, of a repeat of the storyline. Don't talk about it then. Don't talk about it then. But it seems like the writer's got ideas for her if these, if these rumours are yeah, true, that's, at least. Yeah, it's heartening for her to... Yeah, and yeah. I, I'd like to see her tackle a, a challenging storyline. It I could think be she... make or break, really, because like I said, yeah, exactly. I'm not sure about how... what I would her acting ability and how he would rank her um, mm. at the moment, but maybe she's just not been given the right material. Yeah, she's only 12, and I think you're right, the next yeah, few years will be that's why I don't the... like talking about it. She's only 12, and the next few years will be a, a proving ground for her. Yeah. And I know that she's not particularly popular among a, a group of fans because she's a, a brat, but um, I, I quite like her. I think out of all the Windasses and the Armstrongs, Faye's my favourite, I have to say. Because a, a lot of the others are a bit bland. I mean, like Katie is. Izzy just whingers. You can't like Izzy the best. No. Um, You'd be mad if you did. Gary's okay, but a, a little bit bland. Owen, take him or leave him. Or I've liked him more with this storyline. And Debbie Rush is a great actress, but I'm not. I'm no huge fan of Anna's. I just Faye piques my interest. I'd like to. I look forward to having more storylines with her oh. in years to come. I hope you're not disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome to the character profile for Faye Windass. Well she has gone. She's left, hasn't she? Gone to slough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well she has. Yeah. Silent. Oh, so, I agree. Well we thought we'd we thought we'd take the opportunity to do a character profile of her again. What was but, it like se- hmm? how long eight years? Nine, Nine years, years ago years? since we profiled her last. She's yeah. done so much. Well, she has. She actually has. Done she quite actually a lot. has. She actually has. We last profiled her on episode 101 of the podcast, which was back in June 2014, and she was just a young little whippersnapper there that had been in the program just a couple of years, really. So, um, do yeah, the, the, nearly a decade has passed, and now she has um has, has disappeared. So we thought we'd um just kind of put a put a little. Which is the end, isn't it? I, on it I, and, doubt, I doubt she'll be back. Reflect back on her. She could be though. She could be she's back. got. She's got the link. She's got Gary. She's got. Yeah. She's got um, uh, Craig. I'm not convinced that Anna's staying away forever. So Tim. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Tim, of course, of course. So um, I mean, is this going to just be temporary? <laughs> yes, he is actually the I, main one. T- she's just going to be mentioned during major life events for the people you just mentioned. Um, you know, why doesn't why isn't Faye rang? Why isn't Faye here? Mm. He thinks she would turn up for this, and that will be it. I'm, I'm, I just genuinely don't think that she'll be back. I, I'm, I'm not convinced, and, and I'm sad to say I'm, what, I don't do think there's. Not convinced. convinced. Yeah, and no, I'm not convinced that she'll be back. Okay. And I, I'm sad to say that I, I don't think there's going to be lots of people clamouring for her to to come back. I think that you know her time came to a natural end on the show, and it felt like Cory had done everything that they wanted to to oh. to get out of her. Uh, I feel like she's one of the most anonymous characters in the whole show. Mm. Like, what do you know about her? She had a baby. Like, she's just I know, incredibly I, bland. I, I just think I think that Coronation Street really kind of did a number on her, and that there there could have been 
huge potential for Faye. It's very I think. unfortunate because I think that she could have done a lot more. Yeah, yeah. she's got great potential, she, and like like I said, there's on, nobody else in her age group really is that. Not really. No, she hasn't got she hasn't it's got the friends. Shame. She hasn't got the the links. She's just kind of floats along, and and even like Craig now has left him mm. rather you know in a bit of a precarious pre- 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 um, position, but. Um, yeah, so that's so a baffling exit. So it's, and uh, you know, I feel bad for her too. She's been in the show for for year, how fourteen years? Is yeah, it? for 13, 14 odd years. And, and she gets bye bye. You know, oh well, okay. She had a happy ending. She did. I, I, I you know, we'll talk. I'm we'll sure talk we'll talk about, about more of this on the on I, the actual I podcast this notes. week. But um, <laughs> I, I didn't mind it too much. But I was glad that she went away with a smile on her face at least. Um, so, well, let's 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 get to that, shall we? So, where we left her mid two thousand and fourteen, the Windass and Armstrongs were getting into bother with Pat Phelan, and I think that there were certain stories that Faye was involved in that, although she might not have been, you know, the the main um, drive of the yeah. story or, or whatever, she she did manage to to weave in and out some quite exciting stuff because obviously Phelan had coerced Anna into sleeping with him. Think, and as a result of this, things were really quite strained Can between I Anna and Owen. Suggest something. Yes. I think that Faye. I think Summer is the new Faye, but but more in your face. What, why? Why? Just a kind of very average, mid, <laughs> mid tier character. Mid character who is, who exciting things happen to. But you never really care, and it never seems to brush off on them, you know. I, I think that people are annoyed by summer more than they're annoyed yes, with Faye. But maybe that's the, the oversaturation of summer, and we have clearly You've never not been had that saturated with Faye. With Faye. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Um, so um, yeah, things were kind of really strained between Anna and Owen because of this this rape uh, from Phelan, uh, and basically, as as we left her, Owen was pretty much only staying with Anna for Faye's sake. And as the year went on, we learn about this crush that Faye's developing on an older boy at school, one Jackson Hodge. because he was very tall. Well, he, he was played he by somebody else back there. Wasn't. In fact, in 2014, he wasn't played by anyone. He was just a name. We didn't even see him. And um, yeah, there's, there's rumours that start to circulate, kind of autumn-ish um, 2014, that she's been sleeping around, according to Craig. So Craig is three years her senior, I'm going to say. So he was... Um, you know, back, back then, lots of people were saying, oh, Faye Craig romance. That would be a little bit weird because she's still... Uh, how old was she at this point? 12, maybe? He was that little bit older, and I think that... Was when you like when you Yeah, when you're that young, a relation... The, the, the age three gap. Three years age gap is, age you know, gap monumental. It's huge. Even, even t- you know, even if you take um, teens and... Mm. And like kids in university, it's yeah, um, absolutely too big. Absolutely. So um, they they were they were building something there, and I did actually quite like that they returned to it in in you know many years down the line, even if it didn't set the world on fire. So two thousand and fifteen was the I'm gonna probably say Faye's most memorable moment, and that was the 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 surprise pregnancy and birth. But, she had a bit yeah, of an Abby moment, didn't she? But almost got, got to say, yeah. It, it was overshadowed by the memory of Sarah Louise's pregnancy, mm. teen pregnancy, which is by far a more memorable storyline. Oh, absolutely. And and uh, who could possibly hope to compete with that? And they must have known going into this that that was their goalpost. Mm. And they knew that they were never going to, you know, do as much, um, have as much impact with this well, story. Well, with Sarah Louise's pregnancy being Corrie's first being part of the Platt the family, news. you know, you had David Gale, Audrey, Martin, I don't, you know, Richard wasn't on the scene at that point, was he? No. But you had some really big characters, they made such a thing of it, and people couldn't help but compare. And no, it wasn't that exciting, but they did make it a little bit different, because well, in this case, um, she... She hid it. She, yeah, exactly. She found out that, through doing an internet questionnaire, apparently... That um, she found out that she's pregnant, and then she goes to get tested. Yep, she's uh, seven months pregnant, so she decides oh. to keep it stum for another couple of months or so, and, and and only her and Craig know. So that was fairly different, having a, a secret pregnancy well, it that makes, nobody noticed. Yeah, it makes sense that um that there would be a story like this mm. on Corrie. Yeah, I I really felt for her. Um, yeah. and like. Just you know, the the complete unknown, having this sprung on you, Horrible. not knowing what to do, Terrifying. only having Craig to confide in, who was a you know he's a really he's a 
generally good guy, isn't he? A little bit misguided and and, and things, and, and not a bit know, overbearing. Not Weatherfield's best copper, but he's he is absolutely full of heart. His heart is in the yeah, right place. That's true. So to to have him be your confidant is actually quite nice. But I, you know, as as a young girl, I did feel really bad for it's her that terrifying. she she didn't have her her mum, you know, a, a foster or mum anybody. or whatever you want to call her, somebody grown up to help her out there. Um, we we first meet Jackson early in two thousand and fifteen because. Um, the kids are supposed to be going on a trip to France for school and um, they all go to the school for a meeting about it and, and Faye ends up, I think, sitting next to Jackson and, and it's it's all very awkward and, and, and uncomfortable for Faye who kind of flounces out of the meeting. Can you imagine what Jackson's parents think of them all going to Slough together? Why? Well, because they must be like, this bloody floozy kid. <laughs> you know what I mean? I bet you they're not very complimentary about, about Faye. Probably not. Probably I don't imagine not. she's their favourite person, is she? No, no we didn't. Yeah, we didn't. I mean, get they basically got side of things this time, did we? I don't know how Jackson, as we see him now, it, it seems like a very responsible parent, doesn't he? Very nice, very involved. Yeah, but, but he's also he was, he just you know, kid. he's a thirteen-year-old yeah. boy. What do you but, expect? But what, he doesn't want anything. No, to I'm do not with saying this. anything like that. I'm just saying that from the parents' perspective. They probably had to do a lot of the raising of, mm. of Miley when they... And she's like, also, bloody kid called Miley, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> so Faye comes up with the decision to give birth to this kid in a corner shop flat. So this yeah, is where Dee um, Dee's Dee living at the moment, uh, previously Daniel. But at the time, it was vacant. Um, and Because I, I think Tim had lived there, maybe. Um, so they were able to get into it and she wanted, she didn't want anything to do with this baby, which was pretty much her stance up until about a month or so ago. But you see, once they can take care of themselves and do chores. And, and speak in an adorable um, American accent. And perhaps go to stage school and, and make you lots of money in Slough, <laughs> then I can see the appeal. Yeah. So Tim starts suspecting that something's going on, on between is mm-hmm. to have it secretly in the corner shop yeah. and and then take the baby to the hospital oh, yeah, she's gonna and give it away. It. Yeah, exactly. She does not want anything to do well, with it. Well, they've got kid. these drawers now, don't they? I think I spoke about this at the time. Where you just put the baby in the drawer. Is it like... Bye. Is it like when you put... Like you can get outside the post office or the bank or whatever when you're depositing parcels and it... You no, it's more it in like you... when, you're, when you put in your... Um, you charity donation into the clothing bin. Oh, yeah, that, well, that, no, that's what I'm thinking of. That shove kind it really of thing. hard and then not like, jiggle it. And then, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, open it up and go, oh, it's clinging on. Still here. <laughs> <laughs> this little piggy went to market. There we go. Oh, okay. um, anyway, so she, this is her plan, but it all goes a bit askew when she goes into premature labour in April and Craig's Weeks. like, I, I, I can't deal with this. I'm going to go and tell Anna. So he goes and gets her and says, Oh, no. Oh, just imagine, just imagine. You, so some kid comes up to you and says, uh, you, You're going to be a grandma? Like, really, really How, soon? I know, this story, I'm sure it was exciting at the time, but reading it back is, like, super exciting, isn't it? Because it you're was, thinking, like, Oh, I wonder what it was like, that scene. Well, I can't mm. remember any... I can't remember... All I remember... I've got vague recollections. her on the floor. Yeah. But this might be wrong. And sort of crying, and and Craig's kind of like hovering over her, going, "Oh my Ooh, god, best not look around the front." And doesn't she get Anna? Yeah, Anna, Anna Anna's and there. Owen, and and I can remember Anna. You know how she used to tuck her hair behind her ear and go be very motherly and stuff. But just didn't, like you would, it'd be bl- blow your mind, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. So um, Owen, Owen's mind was blown so much so that he attacks Craig thinking he's the father but Faye's like no 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 it's, it's Jackson so they're like right let's get this Jackson Hodge on the scene we need to get him to take responsibility yeah, so for point, what he's done Miley is is living with the Windasses and Faye's the mum yes no, named her after plan, Miley Cyrus of her course her plan to get rid of the baby yeah sort of fell by the wayside I, I, fairly quite. quickly I don't, I don't think Anna would have um, gone for that plan to be honest first Jackson denies even having slept with Faye and his parents believe him he's a good boy yeah um, so Faye says no, no, I, I, I don't want anything don't want to do with this kid I don't know why you, you, you want him Anna's like fine I will raise this baby Aww. myself good for her good for her well but, she quits a job yeah exactly and, and, and Owen quits her this is the final sc- the straw for him because the, the relationship had got so strained in the previous year after 
the, all the feeling stuff that he's like, I'm, well, I, he was, I can't be doing with this. I'm going to Aberdeen. Um, he was already thinking, I can't wait for this fate to grow up and move out so we can, we, me and Anna can just... And then all of a sudden, another baby turns up, and he's looking at another eighteen years. I wasn't really a fan of Owen, really, and I thought that more than you did. Yeah, I thought that this exit for him felt a little bit rushed. It it wasn't the best of exits. I like antagonists, and I think we need more antagonists in the show. And he was a very good one. Mm. So Faye just does anything she can to avoid Mm. spending time with Miley, Um, and and there was a really great scene. I love this one where Anna finds out that. well, Faye said, I'm, I've got to go, I've got to go on a school trip today. Museum. And it turned into a museum, exactly. But it turns out that it's actually a go-karting treat that the school has organised. So Anna, kind of, you know what she's like, like, I'm a right lady. She turns up at the school with Miley. I think she even comes onto the bus, maybe, I can't remember. And she's like, this is your daughter, this is your responsibility, you deal with her. And this is, uh, and um, it felt at the time like, that's like, really harsh thing to do just to completely embarrass your daughter in front of all her friends at well, school. Well, did they all know that she'd had a baby? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah I think I think they did. Um, but, yeah, she was... I, I don't know whether that was necessarily the best move from Anna, but, mm. you know, so what one might say that if you're a mum or father, don't shirk your responsibilities. And, and Anna... Go, what, go-karton, if you like. Uh, Anna certainly... Um, wasn't one for mint and her words. Well, she, she was, it was a bit of tough love, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. She, you know, we, we didn't necessarily, we, we, we loved to hate Anna on yeah, the podcast fast then, didn't we? But I think looking back on her, she was a bit of a, you know, she was a bolshy character, for wasn't a long she? Time, and, and maybe a bit of bolsh is what we need a bit more of on Corrie at the moment. I did like Anna. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think it was, it was a bit slightly before Pat Phelan turned up. That I started to sour on her. Well, it was because we love Pat so much. It was a character. Anyway, so this is the first time that Jackson actually saw Miley in the flesh, and it, it spurs him on to admitting, "Yeah, that, that's me. That's me, girl." Um, and and his mum and dad immediately are like, "Right, we are going to do whatever we can to support you." So we have the the christening come along in June. Faye has had as much as she can take of this kid. Walks off during the service. Um, and then the Hodges say, well, maybe we'll take Miley off your hands for a little bit. And Faye's like, yeah, go on then. I don't, no, no, no. You have her. It's not like they said, oh, she'll be babysitter for a week. They said, look, we'll take, we'll we'll raise her. Yeah. And Faye was like, yeah. Yeah. I, and I remember at the time thinking, oh, that's a bit of a cop out. And I know they'd done it with Sarah showing the, the troubles of... Um, raising a child. It's not been too long since that's been a big thing on, on the classic Coronation Streets on ITV3 and her, you know, wanting to go out, finding it difficult to go to school, having to take a kid to nursery all whilst being a teenager. But they maybe could have done it again with Faye, but it felt almost like, on no, the, the pregnancy was the story. We don't really want to have her saddled with a kid. Let's, let's ship her off to Canada, which is where the Hodges have ended up within a few months. Did you kind of... Yeah, Would you think... have preferred it to have gone differently? Would you have preferred Miley to have stayed all the time? Yeah, it did feel a bit like sweep it under the carpet. We've done that story. Let's get let's get on with something else. Mm. Um, but equally, we always say, you know, would give a, a character a baby and they suddenly become a lot more boring for the next well, few Abby's years. Well, Abby's managed to, Abby. to kind of avoid it a little bit, but you, know, you never see her with a kid. and She never goes... What, what well, we just always... never very, very rarely see Abby. She's barely been on our screens for the past year since uh, since having Alfie. What always happens with a baby is we get loads of scenes of the characters going, he's looking after Barry. I'm going to do the after school club. Uh, uh. Or they're like, oh, so-and-so's not in school today because there's a leaky pipe. Like, oh. it, it just felt to me a lot like this story, they had a specific time frame that they wanted it to run in. They didn't want it to be a tragic, you know, stillbirth or anything like that. And it was just very convenient that the family took the kid and they went off to Canada. Yep. But oh, it was probably it was probably for the best for the character in the end because for she Faye. she yeah for Faye in the end um, yeah. because she she did go on sorry um, to have a few more decent storylines um, after that as well. Well, they go to Canada they, and yeah. and uh, Tim and Anna are really upset because obviously it's their grand. Tim was absolutely lovely with Miley, wasn't he? Because 
it, we, we were kind of, Faye was really worried about what her mum and dad would think about her having a child at such a young age. Um, but I'd Tim, get was, over and done with. Tim was besotted, Have wasn't he? young and then you can send him to <laughs> Canada. And I did enjoy seeing Tim's reaction to seeing Miley again for the I first know, time in Donkey's sweet, Years but... just recently. Hey. He, he, he was lovely with her. Um, we get to see a little bit more of Faye's possible lingering feelings for Craig towards the end of the year because he's going out with this Caitlin, you know, um, Caitlin, what's, his fa- what's her face? The daughter of me that we were talking about yeah. the other week, you Guy know, from Paddy the... McGuinness. Yeah. yeah, and um, so she, if Craig's going out with her and Faye's just that little bit jealous, um, but they don't really go any further down that line for at least a few years. So that takes us to the end of 2015. The next year, Gemma. I'll tell you, 2016, it all went down. What did? I don't know. Faye is, um, so, so Kev- Kevin and Anna are starting to date and Faye is very supportive of this. And she's Another also... relationship that you look back on and say, did that really happen? I know. Even at the time, because didn't Anna and Kevin like have a kiss at New Year one year and then they were barely seen together for the next nine months or something? They were hoping yeah. that it didn't lead to another <laughs> pregnancy. Yeah. Um, so she also helps Craig track down his father in prison. Oh yes, for that bit Do of you remember that. Um, she I do, starts... because it's us is when we find out that Beth and Kirk weren't really married. It's ridiculous. She starts a relationship with Seb and Anna's getting terrified that she's going to get pregnant again as a go at her. And then Kevin's like, oh, you know me, I'm very chill. I would never say this to my daughter. She should be uh, have a more soft approach like <laughs> I did. Look how well my kids turned out. So they invite um, Seb around for dinner and then they find out it's actually quite nice. I thought that this was lovely. And I think lots of people might forget that Seb was introduced just as the boyfriend for Faye. Yeah, that's right. I remember them like sitting on swings together for a bit or, or being in... Wasn't he a shoplifter at the beginning? Um, Possibly to feed his starving um, siblings. I don't know. But I, I remember for, for the longest period, he was this. just literally... he was, Oh yeah, that's Faye's boyfriend. Yeah. Um, and... and that could have been something that could have turned into a really nice, long-lasting relationship. I, I liked Faye and Seb together. I but, think they brought out the best in each other. But in retrospect, do you not find it a bit odd that she and, and Seb were dating? When, if you think of Faye, and then you think of that group of characters that were involved in Seb's death, can you see Faye fitting in with any of them? Because I can't. Well, no, but then I wouldn't necessarily say that I would see Seb fitting in with them. because well, it's only a couple of weeks. Well, yeah, because you, you oh, with Seb's death, you had you had Asher and Amy and Summer and, and all that gang. They were definitely a team together. Nina, a bit of an outsider. Seb, he didn't really have that many connections on the street. It was all a bit of a mishmash. So I, d- I don't particularly find it weird to remember think... that, but it does seem to have been forgotten. And I don't remember when Seb died, whether we even Faye got a reaction is. from Faye. I don't... <clears throat> I, I've always thought of Faye as being rather immature even mm. up till recently I just think she's quite she comes across as a very emotionally immature girl do you not think why do you bring that up I'm just saying because I'm talking about her relationship with Seb oh. and that that the whole Seb's death thing all the characters involved in that I think were quite emotionally intelligent aren't they and they, they yes. were able to discuss their feelings and you could tell you know how they felt about each other. Faye's just an enigma. Mm. I would have. It would have been quite nice for her to have done a little maybe turn of Seb's garden before she left this week. Although I think a lot of the viewers be going, "What's she? What's she doing there?" I know. So, Even Seb seems to have been forgotten. Seb's dead. Michael, move on. I can't. I can't. So he continues to see Seb as the year goes on, and she gets very smitten and uh, does not really. She turns a blind eye to all the stuff that he goes on gets on with with feeling because he was up to all kind of dodgy stuff there wasn't she yes he um she gets into a love triangle when she and bethany both get taken to a gig by gary and then faye discovers bethany fancies gary who's sarah's boyfriend at the time oh my gosh. and then seb fancies bethany and it all gets a bit confusing but then the trip gets brought to a halt because faye gets drunk on vodka and gary has to take everybody home that was more just a case of let's put Faye into Bethany's storyline for a little bit. But you're right, with the people of the same age, I think just as the years went on, they all just sort of peeled off, didn't they? Leaving this massive hole and, and nobody for Faye to really interact with. Yeah. So 2017 was a great year for Corrie, and not not too bad a year for Faye. So she and Seb, um, 
<laughs> start the, the, the start the year by getting tattoos done. Yeah, what were they and, all? Um, you haven't written it down. No, I don't think we ever saw it because I, I was having a look at some scenes on YouTube the other day and she gets it done on her right hip and there's a few like scenes of her like peeling like, open her tra- ooh, trousers ow. and going, oh yeah, and oh, isn't it gone swollen and red and everything. Oh. I think it possibly just says Seb. No, I, I think it's something controversial. Do you reckon? Do you I reckon? couldn't show it on television. Maybe it's like a swastikas <laughs> or something. Um, Seb, ne- Seb, never, Seb never gets one done. He chickens out. So Faye's left in this relationship but they're well, supposed to be getting like, his and hers tattoos and it was just a, just a hers tattoo. He was like, well, you know, why think, think about Hitler, but I don't know if I want to get... It was not a swastika <laughs> tattoo on Faye, Gemma. All right, I'm just checking. We can't be sure. Mm. Um, so, <laughs> but that's that. That's another one that's been forgotten. This is the thing, whenever the characters on Coronation Street get tattoos, it's like continuity nightmare, isn't uh-huh. it? you got you got Faye with his Tina tattoo, which we know that he's just got like a rubber stamp of, hasn't he? Or the, the makeup department have. That's what they're going to end up doing with Ryan's face, you know. I think this is why we don't <laughs> why we don't have characters getting tattoos very much because it, um just a pain yeah to, to remember but then you get some characters like Abby who just kind of spontaneously sprouts tattoos over COVID <laughs> yeah I also like the way that when they cast um Sal to play um Abby they were obviously like sorry you're gonna have to cover those tattoos up this woman wouldn't have yeah wouldn't have those <laughs> His arm, his anyway, so Faye's get Faye tattoo gets arrest, um, arrested, infected. Um, Anna she should have been arrested for that tattoo. Go- there's a, there's quite a few scenes of Anna just screaming at her daughter. Um, You're a stupid so, little girl. Yeah, and Faye said, right, and Faye for, through this has to go to hospital. So, and the whole reason for this story is a way of getting her into a hospital as if anyone needs an excuse on Coronation Street these days so that she can bump into the Hodges who are over from Canada. So is it possible to say that her having this tattoo was potentially a more life-changing event for her than having a baby? Why? Well, because it left a permanent mark on her, and this, you know, Miley just went to Canada. And Babies she, are fleeting. It's like whatever. <laughs> Maybe. Might as well never, not have even bother having one. What about what does Craig think about uh, Faye having a, a Seb tattoo? What does, Maybe she what does Jackson it. think? Does he know yet? Maybe she's like, no, it's Bez. It's Bez. <laughs> um, so anyway, so the Hodges are over from Canada because Jackson's dad um, is in need of a hip replacement. And Anna... Those uh, bloody tourists coming uh, over here, taking our NHS. Anna loves it because she doesn't really like Seb and Faye being together and she likes saying that he's a bit jealous of Jackson there. If Seb, in fact, he ends up beating Jackson up and he gets arrested for assault and sent to prison and everything. So right. Anna's like, ah, you're never seeing that boy again. Which Faye obviously immediately goes against, and there's um there's a few scenes of Phelan smuggling Faye into prison, yeah. into the visiting you know visitors bit of prison because F- Phelan was Phelan and Seb were working together, and F- Phelan was going to go to see him anyway, so brings brings Faye along, and um when Anna discovers this, she has a you know perfectly calm rational reason. Yeah. No, of course she doesn't. She gets into van with uh, Faye and drives off with her. She like locks her into the van is like, like rah, 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 we're gonna, I'm going to drive away and I'm going to kind of semi-kidnap you even though you're my daughter. Um, and that was like the final straw for Faye who said, I'm moving out it's with Gary. Strong. Gary and Izzy, who also used to go out. Revelation for any recent listeners of the uh, Honestly, or viewers of Coronation Street. If you were to ask most people, how are Gary and Izzy like, what's their relationship to each other? I bet you loads of people would think they were brother and sister. Do you reckon? Because he has a very kind of fraternal... I think he's he's that kind of guy, though. He's really... He they feels... do have a kid together. I know they do, but where is he? He's he was, he, was having, he was having a milkshake in the cafe just the other week. He's but had, do you know... He's do had you know two you, scenes well, I think other no, people no, might agree no, with no, me. No, I agree with you. Just, just we Josh should them. start. We should start giving fake facts in, like, not... Just Accidentally, like we normally do, but on purpose. Just to Just... see if anyone picks up on it. <laughs> do it. Um, so, okay, so um, Seb gets released from prison eventually. And he's got he's a load of free tattoos in prison. <laughs> it's the best place to get He him. gets an apprenticeship with Phelan, thanks to his caseworker, Nicola, who it turns out to be Phelan's daughter. Who'd have thought? Anna is not as happy in the slightest to see him and Faye hugging when he gets back to the street. Since Tim says, I'm going to report you to the police for sleeping with an underage girl because he finds a condom wrapper in the bin and Faye and oh. Seb decide, let's let's have secret relationship, yeah? Which Faye kind of, she obviously <laughs> learns some key skills during that because she does it with her Craig later when she's the one that ends up in prison. Who, how old was Seb compared to Faye then? 
I don't think there was a whole lot of difference. It's grubby, a couple isn't it? of years. It, it was certainly not as big as the age gap that, that her and Craig I know, but if, he's un, if she's underage, it's just... It, yeah. It, I mean, it, this was 2017. I don't think they could... I don't think they would do this now. And I that wasn't that long ago. Would. What have a But have a character that you're supposed to be sympathetic to having yeah. sex with a girl that's not even 16. I think that's And he's older. If they were both the same age, yeah. But mm. he's like a couple of a couple of years older is too actually, old. Actually, actually, well, I won... I can't remember whether he's might be just the same age as Faye, you know. Well, the and same not, age is, is easier to... Yeah, and, and she was still underage, so he would have still been in trouble for that one. Mm-hmm. I can't remember. I don't know. I, you didn't listen to this podcast. Don't take facts, our advice about it. So in September, Faye um, <clears throat> gets a text from Seb to say that he's he's dumped her. Oh no! Fucks. She so see, she goes to see him and notices that he's got a bruised face, which she claims is from a fight, but it's actually from his stepfather. Is that Dane? So, hmm? Dane. Um. 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 Is it? I don't know. Well, it's 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 Abby's partner. Yeah. Is that Abby's thing? boyfriend. Yeah, um, his this, stepdad. This is this is the this is the um, broadening out of the Franklin family, which yeah. was the big thing for for autumn of two thousand and seventeen. So we had the introduction of Seb's mum, Abby. We get hear about all his uh, the the awful conditions that the Abby's children were brought up in because she was a massive deadbeat mum. Oh, no. um, yeah, the, the stepfather's back on the scene, oh. beating up Seb, and find, Faye finds out the truth and tries to get him to run away from his family and flee with her to Dublin of all places. But he's like, I don't want to risk leaving my mum alone with this guy, so I'm gonna stay here. And he was such an honourable chap, wasn't he, Seb? Mm. He had the, he had the, the weight yeah, of the world on his right. shoulders and he soldiered on through. He was a good guy. Mm. So Anna gets involved too and um, she kind of <laughs> says, she, she, this is this is again her maternal side coming out, doesn't it? And she goes around there and this she sees really this good, hovel this that the really Franklins are living in. Wasn't, wasn't Ab, was Abby there or was she unconscious on the sofa? I can't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. Because there but... were a few scenes in the Franklins' house, wasn't there? And there was definitely one where Abby was just comatose on the sofa. And mm. there was another one where somebody, and I can never remember if it's Seb or Anna, Makes those stupid fish finger fish sandwiches. finger Jenga things. Yeah. It wasn't sandwich. It was like a, it was like a tower like, of fish fingers. I thought it was on bread though. I don't know. Well, anyway, we both remember it differently. This this is when uh, the time when we healthy. also find out that Seb has got HIV. So Faye's a little bit worried that she's going to contract that from him. But no, they don't really go down that route. She's she's fine. She's okay. Um, and um, well, it, she tests negative. Yeah, but they you know it it. Puts a bit of a strain on the relationship, doesn't it? It does, it does. So Phelan then starts to turn... Well, she did, he did, just to be clear, Seb did not know that he had HIV. He gets tested and he mm. finds out he's got it. And then she's like, oh, bloody hell. Isn't it because he's in hospital? This, this is yeah. this is um, when he gets pushed off a ladder, was it? I think, possibly. I don't remember. Maybe we'll, we'll find out. Yeah, yeah, it was. This is when Seb gets pushed off a ladder during his window cleaning round and Anna is um, accused of it and while he well Seb's in prison I think Abby hospital. comes uh, hospital sorry Abby comes along and says look you might be HIV positive you probably should know that you want to run some tests because it turned out that in the past Seb had slept with somebody who was also HIV positive yeah. without knowing and Abby had known and kept it a secret blah blah blah, blah it doesn't really yeah. matter so anyway so um, things get much much worse between Anna and and Faye around this point as well, because Anna tells Faye, because she's getting very, very close to Phelan, this guy raped me a few years ago. And Faye's like, no, I don't believe you. Phelan's a nice guy. He's Seb's boss. You're just trying to turn me against Seb. Um, but then when she goes to Phelan and kind of asks him, says, yeah, yeah, my mum's saying about you. Is, is this true? Phelan is absolutely livid. And there's there's a great scene in uh, the number 11 where Faye's in the lounge and Phelan's there. Um, in the kitchen and he's like slams his hand down on the counter in the kitchen he could, could get proper scary couldn't he so if I was like well, I want to go move back with my mum but um, Seb doesn't want to um, go with her so she dumps him meanwhile Anna's in prison as we said because of um, she of being accused for pushing Seb off a ladder but she escapes um, and then she tries to flee to Scotland with Faye but it's recaptured and what exciting super so weak drama that was 2018 Gemma well, we were all happy that year, weren't we? Yes. And I get sentenced to five years in prison. <laughs> and that this is kind of the beginning. This I'm going to say that Anna going to prison 
was the beginning of the end for Faye because up until yeah, this point right. she was a you know semi important slash useful slash regular character yeah. but with, with, came... Faye, with Anna leaving the program she was really pushed to the sidelines drift wasn't yeah. she do you really have to go to prison for five years for pushing someone off a ladder? Apparently so, if you lie just, about just, it. It just seems silly, doesn't it? Mm. They could have fallen by accident. He had a coma. And he had a coma. He was in one. He's in one. It's a nice rest. So I, I advocate for people just get one push. Anyone. Also, why are you up a ladder for? Get off the ladder. He's a window cleaner. What's he There's supposed no to do? There's no reason for anybody get to be. Stilts. Get an extendable pole. Oh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Tim takes Faye to go and stay with him and Jeff for a bit, you know. This was before Jeff was introduced into this the programme. This was before Jeff was evil. Yes. Faye starts... So she was... Uh, she must have gone and stayed with um, Elaine. No, Elaine was... Elaine wasn't around at this point. Remember, when Elaine came into it, Jeff had been claiming that she was dead for years. You remember in that wrong. Yes. I don't remember when they split up. Donkey's okay, well, years he was ago. being a bachelor then. Yeah, he was so, a swinging bachelor. <laughs> Faye, Faye starts um, a harassment and stalking campaign against Eileen. Yeah, because she's she was married to Phelan, wasn't she, at this time? And she she puts um, firecrackers in the loft. And then there's an explosion and Nicola's like, oh my goodness, what was that? Oh no, my baby's coming now. Mm-hmm. Don't scare pregnant women. that, everybody. Uh, after being out of prison, following the fact that Phelan confessed that he'd done everything, Anna... Everything which we haven't like, really mentioned in this podcast yet so far, but... Murders. murders. And the earring, whatever. Um, murders, Anna, ladder pushing, um, fake so she gets, flat scammery. She gets let, she gets let out of prison... And then Pat comes back to the street and he's running around, like, stabbing people and stuff and trying to ruin Michelle's he did, wedding. He didn't, he's not a stabber, he's a shooter. All right, shooting. Uh, sorry, and it was Anna. So she she appears out of nowhere. We didn't know that she'd had gotten out. Um, but she appears, she manifests in rage and stabs Pat in the chest and then kills him, rude, and moves to Durham. And she takes Faye with her. And, and this was she a bit gets odd. away with it, didn't she? Yeah, the police were like, oh, well, I mean, who know, who's to say he didn't run into the night? No, it's because Michelle was there and she backed Anna's story up that Anna, she, she was doing him. it in self-defence. Yeah, he attacked her. Yeah, but this was just a temporary Paranoid, return. This was just a temporary return for Anna, this was wasn't it? Weird, to yeah, so Anna's gone forever now. And, and Faye's gone as well. And we were like, "What? what's happening? Is is she really going for good? That's weird. Yeah, Coronation Street had to confirm, no, Faye will be coming back. Well, it was, but why we don't know what go? to do with her at the moment. Why, so It was bizarre. So she go, she comes back to see Tim later in the month. And she's annoyed because Seb and Emma have started dating. Oh, yeah. And then... Well, that, that yeah, that doesn't last for long, does it? That, that mini relationship. Tell me what happened, because I got confused about this. <laughs> so Emma ends up dumping Seb because she thinks that he's still got feelings for Faye. He's been really distant with her. But it's the, the actual reason is because he doesn't want to tell Emma that he's got HIV. So anyway, so that, that was the end of Seb and Emma for a little bit. By the autumn, Faye's decided, I'm going to move back to Weatherfield permanently. And she and Seb get back together again. Mm-hmm. So, 2000, n- not much happening in 2018. I'll do 2019. She does nothing. She's just kind of a bystander in Anna's exit story. And in 2019, not so much either. No, Seb gets the wrong end of the stick. Sarah's really friendly. And, and so he thinks she's coming on to, her, to him. But the thing about Sarah is she just exudes sex appeal and everybody wants to, to shag her all the time. Didn't, it's not her Didn't fault. he like walk in on her in the bath or something? Something like that, yeah. Because so, he, he thinks that she's inviting him round and alluring yeah, him round it. with a bit of how's your father and he yeah. goes and sees her in the bath. But actually she was just being nice to him. She's she is like... Trying to be clean. Quite a bit older than him. Well, older woman, isn't it? Mm. Gary tells Faye about this because he wants her to break up with Seb. And then he makes Seb's life of misery at work. Yeah, this, this is when, when he like, was bullying him, wasn't he? Yeah, this is like the, the beginnings of Gary's hold. villainous stage. And he was yeah. Yeah, dumping concrete on his head or something. Yeah, throwing concrete at his face. <laughs> Faye gets a job at the bistro. 
There's <laughs> literally nothing, nothing worth mentioning in 2019 for Faye. But things do pick up the following year, COVID year, 2020. So even though everyone's saying that Ray Crosby, who um, is 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 uh, owning who who, who who owns the Bistro at the moment, everyone's saying he's a bit of a dodgy geezer. She carries on working for him um, over there. And, but, and she is also totally on Jeff's side after Yasmin attacks him. So this was this was Jeff, her um, her granddad, was now on the scene, main character. Big coercive control story between him and Yasmin. Yasmin is um, goaded or into attacking Jeff and, and Faye's like, oh, I totally believe my granddad, which, you know, makes sense. She would do. And she even moves in with him for a little bit to show her support for him. However, she starts to doubt him a little bit when she sees him talking to his supposedly dead ex-wife, Elaine. <gasps> so, yeah, this is Elaine coming into it now. And he, he'd always spun the tale that he he died years ago, but she comes back on the scene, sort of spurred on by the... Um, well, after hearing Yasmin's tales so he... of being manipulated by him. And Faye's like, hang on a minute, who's this? Is this is this my grandma that you've always always said was dead? And, and, um, and, and then he denies that he ever even spoke to her. He also overhears him making fun of Sally after the Metcalf's marriage is going through a bit of a rocky patch. Um, and that's basically the final nail in the coffin for him as far as Faye's concerned. And she breaks off all contact with him. She knows that he's a bit of a wrong one after all. And with Sally's help, um, sorry, with Faye's help, Sally is able to uncover some really crucial evidence that sees him get eventually sent down, which is she, she looks on his laptop and finds some footage of him taunting Yasmin earlier on in the year. This is when the relationship with Faye and Craig started to come back again. So they'd had a couple of years off, hadn't they? We said when they were first kind of within each other's radars a couple of years ago, um, he was a little bit too old for her. It was a bit weird. But now she's grown up. She's, you know, past past 16 at this point. And they think, well, maybe let's put those together. Because I think people did like Craig and Faye together during the pregnancy storyline. They were quite, like, cute and, oh, let's, you know... Craig, as I said, was very protective of her when she was pregnant and everything. And so they thought... I think it was only natural that the, the programme makers wanted to put them together. But it, unfortunately didn't really work out did it from my point of view anyway I, d I think i just stick same as izzy and gary i just get brother or sister vibes off craig and faye i didn't i didn't feel anything sizzle or sparkle for them they would and i and i don't, I don't know whether you know, you know we know how it's ended now and then and they've kind of both realized that they they're not necessarily going to always make each other happy and maybe there isn't that mega passion there between them but I don't know whether we were always supposed to think that and whether they got together because they felt like they were destined because of that bond that they shared through the pregnancy story I, I don't know but yeah they they Craig's starting to realize he's developing these feelings for a mid mid 2020 and um he's a bit gutted because it turns out that she's got a new boyfriend called Noah who I don't think we ever see on screen um, and it lasts all of five minutes. And after Faye is dumped by text, again, this is like the second time we've seen Faye be dumped she by text. She should get rid of her phone. Dating is harsh for the youths of today, isn't it? I'm glad we didn't have all of that. Not that I ever dated anyone anyway, apart from you. And you could still dump me by text. <laughs> okay, can I? Yeah. You, yeah, I mean, you'd probably rather do that than actually talk to me. You, when well, you it get, depends on why we get why are we why are we getting I don't know, divorced? but when, when, when you get mad at me, you like to just not talk to me, don't you? So maybe it would be a text. Oh, you're not talking to me, what have I said? <laughs> um, so anyway, so Craig Craig is comforting Faye in her um, post-dumped state, and um, she asks him out. Brilliant. So Faye um, is still working for Ray in the bistro, Dodgy Ray, and Craig discovered that he is cooking up plans to redevelop the street. Oh, so no. This is the big story, 2020, supposed to be for Corey's 60th um, anniversary, and, and Ray Crosby been... was going to be... Built, built, buying up the street, gonna demolish it down, build a massive hotel this there. This is awful. And Craig, top to detective story. to be, finds him out. I wish that we had seen this 
unfold as it was intended. I know, I know. It, it could have been... And, and this was all supposed to time with the sinkhole and everything as well, wasn't it? But, yeah, it just, just didn't hey, quite work out. So, so Ray is, like, a bit worried that Craig has found his evil scheme. So he buys his silence by giving Faye the job of trainee manager across his hotel and restaurant chain. She's definitely got what it takes. Yeah, sometimes people on Coronation Street get really inappropriate jobs. Like when Sophie was made manager of yeah. Speed Dial, wasn't she? And it's like, really? Are we well, just... isn't there that business principle where you get, you basically get promoted up to your level of incompetence? Because <laughs> once you get promoted to a job you can't really do, you're not going to get promoted anymore, are you? No. So you end up staying there forever. <laughs> I mean, Faye, totally inappropriate for this, but I think we were supposed to buy that maybe she could cope with it. If, but can you the, imagine by this Faye? time, Faye was just, uh, the character was really in a slump and everyone was like, no. It's the same as Craig doing his CID stuff now. Everyone going, no, well, well, he, Craig can't be a detective. What are you on? And we were like, Faye, manager across a chain of hotels? I don't think so. What were you, so did, were you going to say something? I will plough right on. So um, Ray was, as well as being a bit of a, um, a bit of a nasty developer, I'm going to buy up all your stuff and flash my cash. He was also a bit of a sex pest, wasn't he? Yeah, he um, was. Bit of a bit of a seedy guy. And um, yeah, one night he lures Faye to his hotel room to try and tempt her into bed. Isn't he wearing his dressing gown like Harvey Watson's face? Yeah, yeah. I always say his name wrong. And she does sleep with him because she feels like, you know, he's my boss. He's offered me all these great opportunities. Maybe I should do this. She was coerced and we had this big, didn't we? We had this massive debate. This was all going on at the same time as Me Too. And people, the same way a bit with... um, What's go? What happened with Amy and Aaron? Are still quick to blame Faye and act as though she had any real agency in this situation. Mm. It's really still don't seem to get the power dynamics involved with men. She was, she was still a young girl, wasn't she? She was. Not only was she. It's not to do with the age necessarily. She held a position of power over her. Yeah. And he insinuated that she had to do it, otherwise she would lose her job. Mm. So anyway, she does, dumps Craig in shame, and then a month later, Ray tries to actually rape Faye in the bistro office. Luckily, Gary's there to save the day. Um, And then, at the end of 2020, late one night in December, there is a mysterious (laughs) assailant in the bistro who bonks Adam on the head while he's there drinking, left alone one night. Well, he was sad because of something. Something or other. He was drinking because Sarah's probably... Shagging around. Probably. But we I didn't know, get to I see that. Was. Anyway, um, turns out it was Faye. Everyone... Most exciting thing she's ever done. Yeah, people were accusing Gary um, because he and Adam weren't necessarily seeing eye to eye at that point. And, um, Anyone and, could do and that, really. Wasn't it like at the stroke of New Year or something? Um, this was great. On that New Year's Eve episode. This was Faye really was exciting. Like, Twas I. Because he, she thought that it was Ray alone in the yes. bistro that she was attacking, but no, it turned out it was Adam. And um, and this was this was mind boggling. We what is going to happen to Faye now? This was mind boggling because she, even if she got the wrong guy, she still tried to kill him. She yeah. still was trying to kill Ray, and it, and everybody's like, "Wow, <laughs> he was evil." So, yeah, but you can't just bonk people on the edge with a wine bowl. No. I wish she could, but we don't live in that world, do we? And I also, I don't I don't know whether I would believe that Faye would actually do that. She didn't seem like she's it's got a bit cold quite blooded. The, the drive to do that. It is a bit... But hey, it made a good scene. Yeah. Anyway, go on. Oh, no, it's it's your go. Your so go. I was Over just enjoying you. listening to you. Um, so it turns out, because Way, Way, yeah, this is this is the shipping name for Ray and Faye. Uh, because Faye... Way Findas. <laughs> Crispy pancakes. <laughs> oh, I love them. What's your favourite <laughs> filling? I like the beef one. Yeah. Um, so it turns out, because Faye had willingly slept with Ray before, that the allegation of rape's not going to stick necessarily as a defence for her hitting Adam. So... Gary. <laughs> Gary tries to smuggle the weapon that was used out of the bistro so that nobody can know that's what it was was used. This was before... How When did this all come out? What? When did what I'm just out? confused who's telling them this. Telling who what? Who's telling Faye that, you, you know, you can't just hit people on the head? Gary, probably. 
Well, this, okay, so he tries to get her out of it, but he gets caught by, by Craig. And then everyone thinks he did it right. And Gary gets arrested and held in remand in prison. And then Faye's like, oh, this is a bit awkward. It was me that did it. <laughs> and then she gets put in prison and she's um, she gets released pending a formal charge. And is this when they were both in prison at the same time for the same crime? Maybe. That I think the police, you know what? I think in Weatherford, the police should just put everyone in prison on remand just to see. Just to be on the safe side. Yeah. They're, they're all potential They criminals. haven't added a soap opera that's been set in prison before. Maybe that's a new uh, format. That, what was Bad Girls then? Not a soap opera. <sighs> Wasn't it sort of? Nah. Oh, we never watched it, did we? we did just not. knew someone that really liked it. At her plea hearing, Faye pleads guilty to the charge of attacking Adam... And she gets sentenced to three years in jail. That was like a massive shock, wasn't it? Leading know, up to that, like, I remember how thinking, she gonna she's going to get out like, of it. They're not going to send Faye in Faye in prison. And, and it was, yeah, they, she gets sentenced to three years, but she, she obviously doesn't stay in prison for three years. But I remember it being pretty, really pretty shocking at yeah. the time. So Craig vows to stick by Faye, but they were like, we have to keep this relationship secret because I'm a police officer and I can't be dating a jailbird. <laughs> so at the end of the year, Debbie... Lovely She's Debbie is manages to get Ray to confess that he raped Faye because she found enough evidence about the sinkhole that the sinkhole was something to do with that. I don't know. Ray had been the one that had manufactured the sinkhole appearing in the Platts back garden. Oh, yeah, so that's what confused me. But you said the sinkhole was manufactured like it was put made in a factory and then installed no. in the back garden. It didn't manufacture this is a why sinkhole. I asked, this is why I said to you before I read we it. record, read the notes. Anything you don't understand, let me know. I'm not going through and marking your notes before <laughs> we read. Yeah, so he was basically responsible indirectly for Johnny's death. Debbie finds this out and's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dob you right in unless you confess to rape and Faye. So he does. Mm-hmm. And then this is enough, apparently, to get Faye freed pending an appeal. And then she gets a job at the factory. This is this is one of the things that boggles me, my mind about the justice system. I don't know if this is the real justice system in this country or if it's just a Coronation Street thing, but like you, you shouldn't get out because you bonked someone on the head because you thought he was somebody else that raped you. It should have nothing to do with it. I know. I really don't think it counts. No, no. I, I mean, I brought this up several times, but I, I, when I was working... Um, in a local paper as a journalist I went to a court case where the whole family was up for murdering a man and we weren't the, the jury weren't told the reason they killed this guy is because he was a paedophile who'd been um, raping the youngest daughter of the family that didn't come out up once mm. for the jury so why are they allowed to take this into consideration when they're give, yes, getting her off the an appeal the weather justice station, as, um, system works in different ways they're like ah, oh, six months that's enough isn't it She's not going to bonk anyone else on the head, is she? <laughs> and if she does, we'll just put her back in prison. Yeah, I felt really bad for Ellie Leach during this because, I mean, the, the the character of Faye had already been, you know, her fate had been d- decided at this point. It's like, we, we, we don't, we're not going to make her a massive star of Coronation Street. And um, Ellie was said at the time that it was like the most boring six months of her life. She, she was looking forward to getting back to work and when she found out that Faye was going to get sent to prison and Ian McLeod had told her, don't worry, don't worry, you, you're going you, you're gonna to have some time off but you will come back again. But yeah, she just kind of potted around for six months and, well, and was, had nothing else to do. This was like during COVID too, so she couldn't do anything. Mm, mm. And, and yeah, she just said it was really boring and she couldn't wait to get back to work but she had a bit of a, a, a sort of, attack of nerves when she got back because she was like going back to school she said yeah she said it was yeah it was i think she soon kind of got back into the swing of things but she she spoke at the time about that long period of time off the being th- a bit odd to come back to yeah and, and the, also the thing is to think about her too being sent off for six months and you know in club was like you are going to come back i promise you your character will come back but she she never doubted that she would come back. But I would I would be like this. Oh, this doesn't seem right. I don't remember this happening to anybody else. Because she's still got contracts. She's still got a minimum number of episodes. She must have been paid for literally doing nothing. Yeah. So and, and also, also there's no, no reason why they couldn't have changed their plans and gone. Actually, no, we're, we're getting rid of you. Yeah. Or the producer, he, he could have like you know the producer could have changed. You yeah. don't know. And somebody else might come in and go. Well, no. We don't need you anymore. Well, even, you know, they did bring her back, but 
less than two years later after she came back, she's not in the program anymore. And I, I've mm. kind of been having a little look at the the interviews and the wording of of things all about Ellie's departure from the street. And I'm I'm not I don't know. I'm still not sure whether it was her decision to leave or whether she was given the old heave ho by Ian McLeod. And and if it was the latter, then I feel really bad for her, like being. You know, strung well, along for those six months, brought either, back in to do not very much, have a terrible story with Emma, which we'll get to in a minute, and then told, yeah, your, your services are no longer required. Either way, I think it's it's bad because you're taking an actor and you're you're basically giving him golden handcuffs, aren't you? Here you go. You can't be in anything else, but mm. you can't be in this either. Yeah. And this is, you know, prime for an actress, prime years for her to... Mm. to, to Get your face out there. Get yeah, get roles, get other things, and yeah. now we here we are six uh, two years later, and I uh, I don't know if if she had had a bigger role in Corrie, mm. if she had would have a better prospects for I I don't know, I, but I'm just you know yeah. as far as being a, a prominent character in Corrie, you can't say that she has been. No, absolutely. Not. Anyway, the end of that year, she begins driving lessons with Craig, but he quits as so she's not very good, and so Emma. Takes over, and what a fateful decision that would prove to be. Yeah, so early in 2022, in fact, I think it was the first episode of 2022, um, Faye's driving back from a New Year's party with a slightly tipsy Emma oh, in on, the no. passenger's seat. She's not still drunk, necessarily, because we, ha- we had this discussion before. She was She had drunk heavily the night before. She wasn't drunk. She hadn't drunk since... I was. Midnight. I can't remember. I thought she was a little merry still, but I don't remember. I really can't. I think Emma's just always merry. <laughs> that is true. But they were. There was a bit of a question surrounding if she were to be breathalysed at that point, would she still have had alcohol in her system? I'm saying I don't believe for a minute that she would have done. But if you're going to be responsible, you probably shouldn't be in charge like Emma was, because she was the responsible driver. Faye was still learning. Turned out not to matter in the end, Doesn't anyway, within a few man. months. No. So, well, she didn't kill it. So, Faye's driving down the road, and then she accidentally knocks over this old man called Ted when he walks out in front of her. He's a nice he guy. They take going. him back to his flat, but within an hour, he's there dead on his sofa. So, the pair are like, bloody hell, have we just killed this guy? What should we do? I know. Let's... Not, not, you know... Well, inform the authorities, or, or you know, phone the. Uns- no, they're just gonna, they're just gonna pretend that they were never there. So By they, this point, they get rid of all evidence that they're ever in, Faye, in in Ted's flat, apart from they accidentally drops a fake nail down the sink. By this point, Emma would not have had enough alcohol in the system, and I know it's not the same thing, morally speaking, as being in the clear for this. Mm. But I just think it was an accident. And I don't understand the drama around the possibility of a woman still having enough alcohol in her system to... I don't think that that was the huge drama. The drama well, was, stupid, did, did the accident kill him? Would he have died anyway? And I think that afterwards it came out that it was kind of caused by the accident. It was a bit, yeah, but okay. He and also, out. did they, the fact that they just abandoned him, yeah, but his dead body. It wasn't through incompetence. She was driving and he walked out and hit her. It's, an ac- it's literally an accident. Yeah. What is this obsession that everybody has with accidents having to be somebody's fault? It was an accident. It's because they didn't report it. Was drama, it, it was drama. It was drama. I know it was drama. It was, it was a bit of a silly story. It, was, it, it ended up being a poor exit storyline yeah. for Emma. That's the thing about it. That's why That's why I'm getting so annoyed about it. it was Because it wasn't just a silly throwaway storyline. It had really high stakes attached to it. Mm. So they're, they're there trying to cover up the fact that they were ever <laughs> at this guy's flat. They involve Craig in it yep. because he has to go Still there and, and hook this fake fingernail out of the sink. Um, and honestly, he, he, can I just say, at this point, this whole storyline is done forever now. This will never come up again. He is basically, a, he he worries he's a bank copper, and I'm afraid that he is. Well, he is a little bit, well, isn't he? Well, is he is not a little, little bit at all. He's definitely... Slightly curved, yeah. Mm. Um, anyway, so Very he... flexible. <laughs> he, he, um... He, he's like, oh, what, what shall I do? He, well, he resigns from the force. Well, he go, gets yeah, a job yeah. in the factory. For everybody, just seems to get a job in the factory if they don't know what to do with them. That's the place where people who don't have any other prospects or qualifications or anything just go to spend a bit of time, don't they? Like, Faye like working purgatory. at the factory, really? Was that really where she was suited? But equally, where else could she? It's literally the purgatory of Weatherfield. Mm. So, um, 
He, he, he goes to work at the factory for because a little bit. Because he feels bit. guilty because he got this nail out, didn't he? Yes. But I think, honestly, after learning a trade of plumbing, he should have made use of that. He could have worked yeah, with Ed. He could have worked for Ed, exactly. Well, you know, he'd have taken over from Paul at the moment, couldn't they? They need good uh, people working there, don't yeah. they? They need strong men. Faye finds out that she's pregnant, or she thinks that she's pregnant, but it turns out that it's actually Discuss. a false positive pregnancy test because she's actually started the early menopause. But don't worry about that. Yeah, and that gives you a couple of scenes for the rest of the year. I was, this, I, that, the, the way that this story was treated, to me, perfectly encapsulates Coronation Street's lack of desire to invest anything in this character hang at on. this point. It's not this character. It just it just exemplifies the the um, slapdash approach to issues based storylines. There are some issues based. Some storylines. of them. Okay, there are many people. This, and this the unfortunate thing about this was the menopause was a massive hot topic in at this particular time, this period of time. The Coronation Street completely failed to capitalise on this at all because people were talking women. We're talking about the menopause and there was a lot of conversation going on and a real big cultural shift in people recognising Was it really? Yes, I know you don't care I about don't listen this. To what women say. Davina McCall was talking about it. There was a lot of T V shows and then that kind of well there was a TV show and then that, that kind of got people chatting and talking about it. And um okay, she was very young to go through this, but all women, unless you die before you get there, are going to go through this at some point. This was relevant, important, and timely. And Coronation Street just... It was literally, months went by, then there'd be a couple of scenes... I mean, this is my, my version of it. I'm sure it was different for real, but this is how it felt to me. Months go by, Faye has a little few scenes with Sally going, Oh, should I get I'm HRT? Yeah, and, and, and she's like, "Oh, can I just eat some like bog weed or something?" Well, well, Craig was the one that was force feeding her all that like, stuff, wasn't it? He gets, he starts getting very controlling Tibetan about her diet neighbory. and everything because this was the new spelt Craig that she's now dating, and he's like saying, "If you eat this relevant. kind of stuff, it'll be fine." Um, and she she ends up making a drunken pass at Michael because of Craig over being overbearing. It was it was just a real mess. And really. here's my question: really real mess. I know you didn't write this down because you don't care about it. But did we ever get a conclusion to what her solution to this issue was? Because well, hey, because menopause. Okay, some women don't have very many issues with this. But other women suffer very badly with symptoms and HRT treatment can alleviate them. And there's so many discussions and they tried to do it. You know, Sally was quite good with it, with Faye a few times, talking to her about it. But we, I never really felt like there was a breakthrough or a solution or no. or anything. Is Faye on HRT? Is she drinking a bog weed or whatever she decided was? Uh, I mean, I I I'm I'm all for alternative remedies, but if they really did work, they would actually be treatments, wouldn't they? They mm. wouldn't just be. I I folk would stories. be really interested to know like what went wrong here. Was this story where Faye got her early menopause? put in place a year ago because Ellie Leach said a year ago, I want to leave Coronation Street once my next contract is up. And this was starting to plant the seeds that would then lead to her wanting to reconnect with Miley something? this year. Or were they wanting to make this develop into something? The story starts to get going. Yeah, Ellie Leach says, like, I'm going, or, or they fire her, or whatever it is that happens. And then they say, well, there's no point investing anything more in this then. Really don't know. Narratively speaking, this is a satisfying conclusion to Faye's dilemma, which seemed to centre around the fact that she couldn't have another child. And she was worried about her relationship with Craig and she, you know, do you want kids? Because I can't have them anymore. But it feels incredibly misogynistic to me to have a character have this, menop have this like really serious medical condition, early menopause. It can lead to complications in your later life. Because it's not supposed to happen that early, and that's why it gets treated. It can lead to. to I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go into it, but you it felt can... quite strongly about the story at the time. I remember right. last year. But this feels very misogynistic because it feels as though the story again is well. All you need is a baby, and it's all right because you already have one. So here it is. Okay, it, it so was now very you're convenient. Now you're all um, <clears throat> back together again, and so all your problems are over, right? No, she's still got a medical condition that I don't know what the, what she's doing about it. 
and we'll probably never find we're out. We're never going to find out. And, and not it. every single woman who who, who has a, a menop- has the menopause is worried about their fertility. Mm. It, it just felt like it was a it was a very universal um, what's the word issue for women, and they really screwed it up. By turning it into another story where a woman who is supposed, you know, seemingly childless or worrying about fertility just gets a magic fairy wand waved and a baby turns up and then she's just fine and happy about it. Well, it was also the thing with Faye was that she she didn't have a maternal instinct. Well, her did she? Main she had given Miley away. Was that Craig couldn't have a baby? Craig's still left without a kid or a woman who wants a kid, so that didn't solve his problem, did it? <laughs> Coronation Street's got a very weird relationship with its female characters and motherhood and i'm not saying it's curry's fault because i think that as a culture we do have this weird relationship with childless women or women with fertility issues but this was a really stunningly bad example of how to deal with that (laughs) and i'm uh, the more i'm thinking about it the more it's annoying you're getting riled up about this i'm just you know I feel very strongly about women's representation and I feel as though women get treated like we're some kind of weird alien creatures, even by other women. This is a really important issue and it it didn't get the respect or time that it deserved. And I don't know why that was and I don't know if they had better intentions for this or what, but... Nice. Do you want to do the, the final what they went to, up to this year? I mean, I think we've kind of said already, really. It's not fa- it's not just... the character's fault. I just think, and I feel bad too for, because I know that Ellie Leach went and talked about. Yeah, she this. she did. She I mean, never... she was doing a load of research and everything about yeah. it, all for the she sake th- of. What does she think? You know, a couple happened? of scenes. Like, how does she feel this went? Because I would be bitterly disappointed if I was her. I don't. I I I, I do not know. I have. We have spoken very fleetingly to Ellie Leach once at Millie Gibson's party last year. She's love. She seemed very, very lovely. She was nice. She was. She was sitting down. Once she, I remember her sitting down on okay. the sofa that, evening. Yeah. At the Alchemist. Okay. So, um, in 2023, Faye discovers the Hodges have returned to the UK. Didn't like you know, chat her up or anything, or see if she's around for, you know, go to a menopause and cheese party or no. anything like that. Jackson says, "Do you want to come and see Miley?" And she says, "No, I don't." So Jackson turns up at number four, and she to to let Tim see Miley. And Faye's angry because she finds out that Tim and Sally have been talking about this and seeing this kid and talking to Jackson behind her back. But she eventually gets convinced by Tim and Sally. And Craig, probably. And to, to sort of meet up with, with um, Miley. Maybe you should. And the implication here is that she doesn't want to meet up with Miley because she's upset that she can never have another child. Well, she she closed her and she felt closed guilty. doors on that part of her life. I know, but I feel she? like the focus was too much on her regret over not being able to have another child. I think she'd made was, peace with the fact that she wasn't going to have a child, and then a and then this ready-made the child just drops in her and lap she's and thinking, it's, sends her all. You know. I don't know. This just doesn't feel like a, <clears throat> a realistic reaction. But who who am I to say? I've never had I've never had a teen pregnancy that turned out to be a Canadian. <laughs> so uh, the weeks go on Faye becomes more and more attached to Miley and also Jackson and Craig's mm-hmm. beginning to get his nose put out of joint because he's doing all the right things but he's not getting any attention uh, you know he buys her a mini <coughs> basketball mini basketball for Miley um, Faye and Jackson g- g- meet up in secret at Chariot Square Hotel and they actually kiss <gasps> and um, Jackson's Jesus. like come with me to Slough we're gonna start a new um, new life in Slough. What's his job? He's got a new job there. I can't remember. So she's like, oh, I don't know, because you know, baby Slough Jackson, very tall. On the other hand, I've got Craig. He's gonna get a secondment to CID. And now that's and my dad. Nothing to stop. And my out, granny Elaine, who can't be bothered to turn up from a leave in scenes. <laughs> so Craig proposes to Faye, and she's even more like, oh no, but do you know. I've always wanted to marry Craig. <laughs> and Craig finds out that about this, you know, she's been invited to, to go to live in Slough. And he's mad, but I don't know why he's upset because he could go to Slough too. They could all go. <laughs> Faye promises she's going to deal with it. 
So Faye and Jackson. Craig's too much of a mummy's boy to leave her and to weather Beth could go. The whole lot of them could move to Slough. (laughs) Faye and Jackson trying to keep civil and friendly for Miley's sake, but Miley's like, "Mum, why don't you come to live in Slough with us?" She's like, "You've not been to Slough. You don't understand." (laughs) And Jack Jackson's like, "You know you want to come with me. You know you love me, and you hate Craig." And eventually, Faye just gets persuaded and realizes that she actually doesn't really like. Craig all that much and she decides to move to Slough well and it's, it's more a case of I think Craig, Craig was saying you clearly you know your heart is there I hated you this. got your daughter um, we haven't spoken about this we, on the podcast we, we, yet we, 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 if we stay together we're always going to have arguments me. you're always going to resent me you're going to bring it up so if you want to go off with your daughter then off you go and she's like you know what Bye. I will I absolutely will. But weirdly, she she does say she doesn't love Jackson. And I I was happy to see her smiling and happy because, you know, she's had a miserable few years, bless her. And when she went off with Jackson, it felt like, oh, she's having a happy ending in a way. And the the relationship with Craig, I never really bought. bought. Coronation Street didn't want to invest in the romance there at all, really. Um, But it was it was odd that she seemed really happy that she was going to go and live with this guy that she, she barely kissed, knows but she him. does bet. Yeah, she, she's literally she doesn't uprooting know her whole life. It's, it was a big move, and and it was like the way that the way that um the way that Craig kind of gave her permission to go to live in Slough was so utterly inhuman and bizarre. Like human beings don't talk to each other like this. It's like he was. He was like setting her free, like at the end of a Disney film or something, where she's, you know she's oh I've got two suitors, but which one? And one of them's like, I will benevolently allow you to leave the kingdom of Weatherfield and go to the mythical land of Slough. Like, are you are you kidding me? This is not how people talk to each other. Craig, Craig was like he had a lobotomy. <laughs> Did he forget that he was supposed to be in love with this girl? He, if you love her, I let think, her go. Yeah, I understand, but that's not real life, is it? Craig, I think, he was does, t- has does have self confidence issues, and it wouldn't surprise me if he was like, "Well, yeah, of course, I'm going to be dumped. I've got the girl of my dreams, and now this guy's come along. That's what I deserve because I'm just Craig." You know, he's he's never know, been the most confident of guys, is he? I know, I know, but is this going to turn into some kind of soul searching for Craig? Is he going to pull his socks up and get on with himself? I don't know. I don't know. I can't what deal the future with holds for Craig. Moping with Craig. There's no one else when, to go out with. For I one can't day. remember who. It, yeah, exactly. I can't remember who it was. Who was it that dumped Fred Elliott? And then he was it? No, was it Fred? Yeah, and he, he spent the whole time smoking and crying. And that, that was Eve when, right. uh, when that she was, was, it turned out she was a bigamist. That was fascinating because he turned from this really gregarious... Oh, no, no, sorry. No, we're sorry. We're thinking about Maureen. Maureen went off a bill, didn't she? And very confident and untouchable almost. Kind of like serial failure in romance, but it didn't seem to, to bruise his ego. But then to see him diminished and, you yeah. know, really suffering, that was, that was amazing because it was such a contrast. If we get... Craig, you know, slumped on the sofa eating eating crisps and watching <sighs> Selling Sunset or whatever. Who's gonna care? Mm. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know what's. I've not seen any spoilers about this what's happening next. This was honestly just so simple I think we might minded. just see a bit like mm, sad face Craig, and maybe he'll be shuffled. Shuffled along out the picture for a little bit, then he'll come back. Now he's a full time member of CID. Maybe, maybe thinking of Craig romance. Craig and Swain, Craig and um, what about Craig Beckett, and Jess? Craig, Craig and Abney. What about he's Craig got the and pick Jess? of the litter there. Jess is a better oh, police, yeah, could be Craig police and officer Jess. than he's ever been. Yeah, his his ex mentor, maybe. Well, so, sorry, talking Faye, about being married to the force. I, you know, you you, Faye's spent a lot of time in the show. And considering feel, how long she spent, it felt like that was a bit of a naff exit. There aren't, but there aren't. It can felt I just say, Faye, in the in the grand scheme of of Corey exits, this was no, by no means a bad a bad one at all. There have been no. far more uh, diminished and kind of m- Throw away. fumbled exits than this. It got you know, it got two two three months worth of story, didn't it? And I know and it wasn't actual, permanently on screen. You know, the final but... scene was was fine. Yeah, but it it just felt felt disappointing. 
because it didn't feel realistic it didn't feel real or human coronation street one of the things we're always talking about coronation street we're always pre heaping praise on it and saying it's those human moments it's those character interactions it's those those things that only only a soap can do where you have characters and you watch them grow up you you, you follow this person for you know over a decade and you see it the highs and lows of their lives and they've got and craig's the same he's been in the show for, for donkey's yeah. years and yet still when they have this character leaving the 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 actual the scenario in which he left she left sorry it felt like it could be any two characters don't you think yeah. it could have been anyone who had an ex come along and whisk them away well, and I mean, that, no, that, that, I'm not criticising the writing because uh, Ian Kershaw wrote that episode and there were some really great bits in that episode. I really enjoyed the episode itself. I, 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 I like so many parts of it, but I just felt that the actual scenario was a bit soulless. I mean, you couldn't have had just any old character have their kid that they gave up eight, nine years previously Excuse turn up on me. the doorstep. Yes, she could. In Coronation Street any man could turn out to have had a baby yeah. without knowing. You know that's but true. Th there was always, with Faye, the kind of the dangling thread of, oh, I wonder if we'll see Miley again, don't you think? Yes, so yes, definitely. It was, it's, but, the same, it's the same with, um, with um, oh, uh, Nina, come back with the baby. Yeah, you know, we're waiting for that to yeah. happen. But I, 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 I think that however it was decided that Faye was going to leave... I'm not going to say that probably a whole lot of mega thought went into, well, what's her exit storyline going to be, guys? It kind of felt like, oh, uh, Ellie Leach is leaving. Oh, should we, should we have Miley come back and she goes off with Jackson? That sounds good. Should we go to the pub? You know, it Well, you know, it felt kind of in In defence, in defence, the other thing to consider really is that Coronation Street is not a story, it's not um, in the business of crafting exit storylines for people based on how long they've been in the show it's trying to entertain you mm. and when and when you have people leaving um it, it it doesn't always matter to the viewers especially with somebody i'm afraid like like Faye, whether how they leave particularly mm. i think that she had a a, a fairly decent send-off as far as the character goes but you can't expect every single exit to be, you know, I was, I'm trying to think of, yeah. you know, like what Raquel Millennium kind of mm. deals. Mm. Yeah, it, it felt it felt suitable to the amount of attention that the show had given her recently. Um, mm. But, you know, I, I think looking back over her stories there, she, she definitely was involved in some to fairly major. big ones. She was a, she was a, minor character in the whole Pat Phelan saga she was, which was massive she was a minor character in the Jeff storyline massive the the pregnancy storyline itself is certainly memorable I, I think that there was there was a lot of good stuff that they gave Faye it, but it still turned out to be just forgettable didn't it unfortunately I don't I don't think Faye's gonna go down in history no which is sad after all that after all that time but I I think, you know, there, there are some characters when they leave, you think, oh, the street's really going to be weird without them. And it isn't always. I mean, you know, Emma left a year or, year or so ago. And we're like, how on earth is Coronation Street going to cope without Emma Brooker? And is anybody really yearning Do for not, her still? Yeah, but if you look back at that, I think that's the time when Daisy started to become more of an important character. And I really do think that... You stepped that, into her place, Well, I maybe. think the producers are thinking we need a big... A big mm. face, a big young female, because you know they they're the ones that sell soap mags. They're the ones that get the followers on 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 Twitter and stuff. They're the they're the draw for lots of younger people. Yeah. Um. And I, uh, you know, mm. I'm not talking about them anyway. I'm talking about about Faye. Yeah. It was it was looking like at the beginning of the year the rumours were starting to circulate about whether she was leaving. I remember. There was a day when um, Ellie had a load of new headshots on her Instagram, and that can oh. sometimes be the 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 thing that people go, "Oh, that's weird." She's getting her face out there again. Do you? you don't need that for Incarnation Street. <laughs> um, and then the Sun started reporting that she was leaving so that she could try a hand at a few other acting roles. And um, yeah, as you know, when 
the Miley thing came in and Jackson and everything, I think people started to go, yeah, I think those rumours were true. So I'm not sure whether there's many people that were like mega surprised that she left this uh, this week. But anyway, so she's been doing a few interviews recently. She said, um, oh, I've been in Coronation Street for 12 years, but it literally feels like I started yesterday. 12 years. That's like over half my life. It's mental. So um, deep words there. Honestly, it's really um, incredible to imagine <laughs> spending so much time mm. in one role. Yeah. She also, she was on, she's been doing like the interview circuit. Has she done this film? I can't remember. She definitely did this morning. And um, she says that she's taken a few of Faye's clothes with her, not to wear <laughs> because she doesn't really I don't know what she, like I can't remember style. what she was wearing when we met her, but. No, I don't um, remember. But apparently. God, do you remember what she was wearing on, when she was supposed to be going she wore that horrible blouse. Oh, what, the this week? Of fame. Yeah, yeah. It, oh, she, she apparently took um, the coat that she was wearing during the storyline last year and she found the fake nail in the pocket. So she's now got this fake nail from down the sink as a souvenir, which, is, a, which is pretty cool. That. Yeah. Um, I was looking back at a few older interviews of her as well. And back in 2018, she said to the Metro, I feel like I want to go back to Faye's dark past. I feel like she's just dead normal now. I want to have a bit of a rebellious stage again. I so she, gonna... she knew back then that the character was not as exciting as she had been. I'm just going to say, if you were to sum up Faye as a character in three words, just dead normal would totally do. Mm. And she's... Kind of a bit like Maria, but, uh, and I think Maria has possibly come out of this by now, but for many, many years, Maria was just like that girl that works at the salon, and she just didn't have any big storylines, and, and it's not like she's, you know, the, the face of the street or anything now, but I think that finally, it's, after a very, very long time, Maria has got a, a role on the street. What helped Maria was the relationship she had with David in the salon. That, that did help, but it didn't necessarily make her a big character. No, it didn't make her a big character. It just made her likeable and it got her on screen. Mm. You know, when you think about Faye working in a factory. Yeah, like cause I mean, she, she sat and had scenes with Michael and and, and I, I we both like Michael, don't mm. we? But it felt very much like well, let's just shove the characters in there if we don't know what to do with them. I mean... Toya, they shoved her in there for a little bit in the factory as well, didn't they? Just what? the marketing department. Anybody can do it, literally, if what? we haven't got another job for them. What doesn't work in the factory are people that aren't machinists or the boss. Yeah. They're, they're they just really needed. don't have a role, do they? We don't know what they're there for. Apart from your packers and your dirks. You can't well, yeah. Underworld okay. fall apart for But you understand dirk. what I'm, my point is, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, so it was... They, 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 they just didn't know what to do with her. And in, in 2000, a similar quote from 2019, this was to bang showbiz. She said, I'm not very busy, really. Just bistro stuff, but not busy with the storyline. It's nice to have some time off, but you think, I'm bored now. I've just finished college, so I don't know what to do with myself. It's just, oh, it just reads as a bit, like, a bit sad. This that... is what I've had a big problem with, with Coronation Street for a while now, where I've been saying the cast is too big. But the thing is, though, because they've got three hour-long hour long episodes a week, they have to have a massive cast because nobody can really cope with doing a big year-long story like they used to be able to. And I'm going to point out that the, there's a definite, definite um, the coinciding between the decline of year-long stories goes directly in hand with beginning three hour-long episodes a week. Because we know when you're working in a big story, you're flat out because those episodes all have to be filmed together. Yeah. So I'm I'm really wondering whether these three episodes a week are, are a bigger, bigger problem than we we really realise. Well, this is what people said when they announced. No, I know, the but six but it's not necessarily week. for the reasons that we thought. Mm. It's because you can't sustain a big story without driving your actors insane you yeah. can't you just can't do it the way that coronation street works but some people still appear more some than people others do in phase. but when you are when they talk about their experiences working that much it seems horrific and incredibly hard work and not like it used to be when you were carrying a story for a year yes it was difficult but it's not three hours of television a week having to be filmed yeah crazy yeah. Mm. It, I just think it makes a significant impact. And um, so, you know, when we're saying um, 
oh, the cast <clears> is too big, and you get people like Faye who are just twiddling their thumbs for ages. It just seems like an inevitable side effect yeah. of the of you. You need these people in kind of on the benches, yeah, and that's I mean, not really fair. My point is, it's not really fair on character on actors, especially well any of them because they could be doing other things. They could be performing and you know in plays. They could be d- doing television work and stuff. And they've definitely there's always obviously uh, a give and take there because they've they've got a you know a role. They're being paid. It's it's work guaranteed work etc. But at the same time, there's a lot of potential that's being kind of hoarded in a way by Coronation Street mm. when they're not letting them do anything. Yeah, but you you never know when a character who's on the benches like. Faye was for a very long time could burst out and become a big star because look at Ryan Prescott people had been saying for years like what's going on with Ryan why is he never in any stories why do we never see Ryan and now he's you know the main face of Corey the main male face for 2023 because of his face literally and you know who knows if Faye had been given a big storyline she could have been in the acid attack storyline and suddenly Faye's the the big name on the street that's exactly my point do you see that that's what I'm trying to say yeah there's potential every single person is there for a reason they've got through their auditions they're they're professional they're talented and they bring something to the show and And they're not being able to do anything other you know well, you know, maybe she just got the job because she was Brooke Vincent's cousin. <laughs> <laughs> I, I often forget that, do you? I, know, I, I totally forgot about that until I listened back to our old, yeah. our old uh, yeah. podcast. Well, one, one of the things she said recently in the star was, um, when I first started, Brooke, my cousin, so this actress who played Sophie Webster, she was like, just be yourself. Everyone will love you. And I think that's just what I've done. And I've just been myself. And I think that's why I've been here for so long. I feel like I've been myself, but I've also made this part of me that will never go away. Corey will always be a part of me, and Faye Windass will always be a part of me. So that's a nice little, nice little soundbitey type quote to to sum up Faye's yeah. time on the street. She played herself, had a nice time. Corey will always be a part of you. I mean, how long did we say it was? 10, Definitely. 11, 12, 13 years? That's made it. That's a huge part of her life, and who knows what. Um, Ellie's going to go on to now. I mean, quite often when characters leave the street, they have these grand ambitions to be this, that and the other. And sometimes it takes a little while to get the ball rolling. Even if you look at like Ali Mardell, for example, not not had the most successful well, of years. But obviously I wish... She's done lots of, you know, she's she worked on that uh, like sick, sitcom, didn't she? Yeah, now cancelled. Well, how many, th- you know, the thing is, not every show is going to... Mm. So I'd be it's really. In, I'm always interested to see what you know what the future holds for for future. For anyone who's coronation just does, I wish you the best of luck. Anyone who's brave enough to to quit Corey and go on and try something new, I think that they're, they're amazing, and mm. um, I wish them all the su- all the success really. Yeah. And I I'm I don't think we'll see Faye again. I don't know. But I don't know. She's had some really interesting stories. I just feel like she was put on a peripheral character for too long. Yeah, yeah, that she was. I don't like doing these ones. Perennial peripheral. There are so, I just, so many character profiles where it just feels like a kind of low energy. There, like, oh, I is there know. anything that you'd have liked to have seen her do? Like, if it's if yeah, you were like on the storyline scene and uh, and team and said, right, you need to give Faye. You need to. We want. We want Ellie Leach. We want Faye to be our poster girl. For Coronation Street this year, what's the story gonna be? Well, the thing is about it is that they had the menopause story, and it isn't it isn't like an action pack. She's not gonna be rolling out of flaming cars, is she? She's gonna be <laughs> she's gonna be going. Oh, is it a bit hot in here? Is it me? It's not a glamorous subject, and that's why it's kind of been swept under the carpet. But Coronation Street has shown itself to be an incredibly responsible and thoughtful. Um, receptacle for discussing some important topics like male suicide like Haley's um transgender experience like you know the teen pregnancy stuff i really feel that there was so much potential for this menopause storyline uh, and it again i literally have no other way to describe it other than a fart i'm um i'm interested that she's left and there's still, you know, the the lingering question of, 
is Elaine going to get bumped off by Stephen Reed this year? Well, she's not going to go to the funeral, is she? Slough's too far away. <laughs> well, maybe this is this is her getting her own back for Elaine not being there for Faye's goodbye party this week. Faye's like, oh, what, that's that? You've been murdered by a serial what, killer, have you? That? Who cares? Oh, sorry. Sorry, Elaine. I can't come back to pay my last respects. <laughs> But I tell you what I want off that off that flat money for setting myself up in Slough. Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you get the, the I mean, idea that Faye talking. and Jackson are going to develop some kind of romantic relationship? Because there is literally no chemistry between Can them I at tell the you, moment. There is no happier a marriage in Coronation Street than one that takes place off screen. You reckon? Mm. I just, I'd get the idea that maybe... Two years time, we're going to have Tim and Sally going... Oh, I've just got invitation to go to Slough for Faye and Jackson's wedding. Oh, that's lovely, Tim. Well, I can't go because I'm in a storyline, but you're not doing anything at the moment, are you? Okay, well, I'll see you in two weeks. I can, I, I can imagine, like, <laughs> Faye ending up taking Miley away from Jackson. Yeah, but this is, this is, all right, what? Okay. And that's bad for Jackson, considering he was the sole, you know, parent of her for the first eight years of her life. But if they want if they want to bring back Faye, I can imagine which might happen, I, I don't what, know. I can imagine Jackson having been kicked to the curb by this point. I would like to have seen it and I know that they wouldn't really do this, but a little scene with Miley and Jackson, because Miley's this is the thing that's kind of being ignored again. There's some very human stuff that's being ignored. Which is a shame. Like, Jackson and Miley and him saying, you know, your mum, it don't feel bad if your mum doesn't want to come with us. And, and Miley going, yeah, but there's just some things I can't talk to you about. But she's my mum. Yeah, they didn't like, go down. She's, they didn't do any of that, Is she starting her period? Has she had her first period? Has she got questions about being a woman, being a girl, things that Jackson wouldn't necessarily be able to help her with? Hmm. The, the, the idea that, you know, I know that lots of single parents are great and we all, yeah, exactly. I don't want to go into bashing single dads or, or mums, but there's a benefit there that, that Miley can now access, mm. that now she's got a, a mother figure in her life. Yeah. It would have been nice to have addressed that. Mm. I think that the, the exit storyline was given as much time as it needed and it did go off. It was off air for a few I weeks, but I was never was, going like, oh, when's that story coming back? They, they gave it a, enough. It was utilitarian. It did what it had to do. Yeah. It didn't do any more than that. Yeah, yeah. And now we just get to see what the uh, the result is for poor Craigie. If he's going to mope around for a while. If Craig literally does nothing now, I won't be surprised. I'd, I'd, I'd like to have Caitlin again, brought back in who, or someone that's actually Are they going to bring really someone in? They need to him. bring someone in. It's like when you... When, when you get a budget and it gets a rounding, you have to buy another budget. <laughs> shall we? Shall we call it a day? I mean, this has been over an hour and a half on on Faye Windass, who um, uh, you know, we who we started off by thinking there's not going to be very much to talk about. I about knew this her, would but take a while. It turned out that there actually was. She did do stuff. We've just all forgotten about it since. So there's your reminder, everybody. Faye Windass gone, not forgotten for now. At the moment, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, thank you everybody for listening I hope you, um, I hope you enjoyed that I hope you learned a little bit or, or remembered something from that recap Let of Faye's know. life what did you think of Faye I know that some people who are similar age to her are going to miss her being on the street because they like to <clears throat> see representation of that age that age you know on screen Ellie Leach if you're listening come on the podcast for an she's interview she's not going to now is she she might do well I I'm, yeah, I don't know I what she love... thinks about Faye I'd like to uh, did she feel well, that she was, she was wrong was, by her she... I mean, she, she's not going to say that but I, I, I would love to be able to talk to, to Ellie I think but... that she did <clears throat> I think she did a good job with Faye and um, I, I think she worked hard when she could but I feel as though the, the character didn't get mm. a great shake no Okay. And, that, and that's about it. So 